All right. Welcome. This is Mark coming to you from Baker's Green Acres. This is uh, the Anyone Farm live chat. And uh, Thursday night, let's see for, let's see what the date is today. I should know that, but as a guy that's farming around here, I don't often <clears throat> need to know that. So it's the 5th of May, 2022. We had a pretty nice day out here today. All right, Justin's with us. Great. Hey, you can close this door if you want. So I won't hear the noise out there. It's warm enough in here. Um, had a quite great day today, actually. Uh, pretty sunny and uh, fairly warm. I think it got up to probably 55 degrees or so. Very nice. Very nice. Very seasonable to be working in. And for me, I had... Uh, chickens that needed to go out on the field and uh, the, the pastured poultry discipline, it, it kind of works like this, this early in the season is I would have chicks in the brooder. They were, they're probably four weeks old or five weeks old and we're putting them out. They'll only be out for three or four weeks before they're processed. So um, we had to get their chicken tractors ready today. Uh, I may have told you that I've reconfigured quite a bit of the water system around here this year just for uh, convenience and, you know, making it better than it was because I had a few weak spots here and there and it was way too spread out. If ever I had a problem and I was losing pressure someplace, I had to, you know, I had to really travel quite a bit to uh, find the problem. So I... You know, a lot of the water system that I had in place, I wasn't actually using, so I deleted it. I just uh, cut it, put an elbow in, and ripped all that out, took all that tubing out, and I've got that for another purpose. So um, I got out there this morning, got the waterers on. Um, I went through quite a few of the fountains to, to see which ones are working, which ones are not, which ones are going to need service. I uh, put the tops on, uh, and here we are. It's, you know, 8 o'clock. It's still light out here, uh, but we're going to have a mild night tonight, which is really good, and then I'm going to have cloud cover tomorrow, but we're not going to have rain until, oh, let's see. Oh, it's going to be a ways. It's a ways out. Yeah, and we're going to have real nice weather next week. 79 on Tuesday, 72 on Monday. 82 on Thursday. Wow. We're going to be swimming. All right. Nancy's with us. Awesome. How many weeks do you let the Freedom Rangers grow before you butcher them? Uh, usually about 10, between 10 and 12. They, they have to go a little bit longer. They're slower growing. But the meat's better, and they, they put on a lot of nice fat right in their in their cavity. Real nice fat. You get a glob of fat out of there. And we'll save that all up, and Jill renders it down, and it is some of the best fat that comes off of them. Really nice stuff. All right, Nancy's with us. Sean Wise is with us. Welcome. All right. So I had a good day, and then afterwards I went out and I I had a couple of places where I, I needed to uh, shore up the water system. Uh, I told you that. Yeah, you know, on the south side of our garden, I planted raspberries there like 12 years ago, at least. All right, Vindicti's with us. And they have, they went from, it was just a two-foot path that I planted them on. And I put down a ground cover so it would keep the weeds down. It's six feet wide now. And uh, there was a water line in there that I just laid down on top of the ground. And when I, uh, I needed to do something about the raspberries. And so I, uh, there was a lot of thatch in there and I lit it off and it burned. And I thought, well, maybe the water line will be okay, but it wasn't, it burned. So I had to rip that out and reaccomplish that. And that, that was okay because I wanted it down low. I wanted it below the plow line so that 
I can mow those raspberries off. That's how that is done. At, at the end of the season, you're supposed to go in there with a mower and just mow them right off. And, you know, you can, you can discharge them on the side of the garden and then till that stuff right in. And uh, I haven't done that. And so the, they just haven't done real well. I mean, they've done well, but not as well as they could have. They could, they could do a whole lot better. So uh, I did that. I had to get that water line back in, and, and there was one faucet that we weren't using, so I deleted that. And as I was doing that, it was really interesting. As I was digging that water line in, it was about 100 feet I had to dig. Uh, I dug out some really nice... Um, raspberry, you know, roots. It'd just be this this root that would look like a just a, a tangle of of woody, you know, and and little roots going off of it. And you, I was pulling those out, and so I got a bucket full of them, and I'm going to take them and start another run of the same type of raspberries someplace else. So. Uh, that's that was kind of interesting to do. I really had a lot of fun doing that, and I've got all the tools gathered up in my van, and I made it in time here to get a little bit something to eat and to talk to you all. And I have a pretty good subject to talk about, um, and I'd like to preface that with some things that I heard today. Uh, people forward stuff to me all the time, and I sift through it. If it sounds like something that I should listen to, then I do. I have uh, several friends that if they say, please listen to this, I listen to it. And I listened today to the Ice Age Farmer. And a lot of times I don't like listening to the Ice Age Farmer because what? Where's the solutions here? You know, We need solutions to these problems. And, uh, you know, he, he does, uh, to his credit, to his credit, I mean, I, I like him. I think he does a lot of good research. I'm not criticizing him. But a lot of times I will not want to listen to it because I've heard it all. I, it feels like I've heard it all. And I've already determined in my mind that this is what I must do. And my... My go-to is what we talked about the other night when Bards was on is, hey, we're going to grow some food. So I listened to Ice Age today and immediately I thought, hey, wait a minute. This is real. I mean, he's given real live uh, situations that are going on in our country right now of food processing plants that are going down like daily, it seems like. I think the number's way up there. Uh, like 55 or something like that since just a couple of months. And some of these are sizable. Now, I he said something today that I had kind of touched on last week. So he kind of validated what uh, validated what I think could possibly be the scenario. Like, if you want to starve me... <clears throat> You're going to have to work at that, you know? You're going to really have to work at that. And so I think the entities that are going to do this uh, are up against American people that are going to say, you're not styring me, you know? Uh, and so they have a rough a tough road to hoe. They, they do have a tough road to hoe. But Americans have a priority problem. I think that is something that you could see in a lot of American people. They have their priorities are not healthy. Um, I've had... Uh, recently uh, conversations with people about this. And they'll say, yeah, can you believe this? Food shortage is coming. Can you believe this? And I'll say, oh, yeah, you want me to help you out with something? Or, oh, no, 
no, I, I, I got, I got too much to do. I can't, there's no way I can get it done. And I'm thinking, holy smokes, what is a greater priority than keeping your children fed here? What is, what is more <laughs> important than that? You know? And, uh, so I, I, th with that in mind, I think there are a lot of people that are going to say, well, I've got too much to do already. And I, so I guess we'll just have to starve. You know, I guess we, there's nothing we can do. I I'm seeing that I'm seeing people react that way to what's going on. Not so much in this group of people here, but, um, you know, I've just seen it way too much or kind of discount what I say. There's people in my family circle that I'd say, Hey, you know what, maybe we should, maybe we should put our heads together on this and do something. Nah, well, you know, we kind of live like that anyway. Yeah, but you don't, you don't have anything ready. I mean, so they're not really on board with the true survivalist, you know, idea. So I, I have to look at this and say, no, I don't believe anything that Biden says. And he says there's going to be food shortages. Why should I believe him now? Ah, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Um, and I've I've gone back and forth with this a lot. And I've even told you guys that I think that they'll probably handle this the same as they did the Wu flu. They'll use their little accomplices. Like they, they're even doing it with farmers. They're paying them not to grow stuff. You know, and a lot of these, you know, these multi-million dollar uh, processing plants or food, pro chicken production plants, they'll go in and get one PCR test and they'll close the place down and fire all the employees. Like they're not opening back up. So the, they always have their accomplices. Uh, even the, you know, the Walmart greeter guy, he was an accomplice. I mean, he, he would say, well, I'm just doing my job. But yeah, but you are an accomplice. You you are working with them, right? Now, he doesn't know. He doesn't know. I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty. A lot of them probably are saying now, yeah, I shouldn't have done that, you know. But with this food crisis thing that we're hearing so much about, possibly what they'll do is they'll just keep yakking about it and they'll tell you about you know, obscure places here and there in the United States, and they'll show people that are starving, you know, and then you'll think, oh boy, this is bad. Good thing I'm not though. Good thing I'm not starving. So they, they may play it that way. That may be. Um, something tells me that they had this planned out for a long time though. Something tells me. And it seems to me most of the things that they pull off, it looks like there was a plan. Now, when I when I go back in time, I remember a time where they said you have to get all the pigs off the farms in the state of Michigan because they could go feral. And so everybody's got to get rid of pigs because they could go feral. And, you know, there was a couple of farmers that said, I don't think that's going to happen. And they dug their heels in and said no. But had those not one or two farmers done that, there wouldn't be a pig to be found in the state of Michigan. Do you realize that? That was what they wanted. And I had pork for dinner tonight. And um, I have a lot of people ringing my phone, want pigs now. That Every one of them that I've sold pigs to would not be getting pigs now if we had allowed them to do what they want to do. And now they're telling us now they're telling us that, ooh, your chicken, your backyard flock <clears throat> could be problems, you know, could have the bird flu. We may have to get in there and knock them all off. Yeah. So it, I don't know, it, it looks, it's pretty obvious to me. I hope it's obvious to everybody, but I don't think that's going to change a lot of people's priorities until they're hungry until they're hungry and i think that's just the way it's going to be i just think that's the way it's going to be i i don't think you can you can motivate people if they're not motivated 
they will when they are spending all their free time waiting in line at a store, you know, for whatever they can get, not whatever they want. That I think that's probably how it's going to like uh, present itself. So you'll go to the store to do your week's worth of shopping, but you only come away with two days worth. So you got to go the next day or you'll have a card that says when you can go like a ration card. So you're spending all your free time waiting in line. Uh, not that there is a, a shortage of food. It's just that you they won't let you have what you want, right? That may be how it presents itself too. But either way, there's a storm on the horizon. And that's all I really need to say about that. You know, I don't think I need to convince anybody. If you need convincing, okay, well, then cool. I But I, I would definitely uh, approach it a short-term and a long-term I would short term, you know, spend a few hundred bucks and get rice and beans and get that stuff put away and then start absorbing what I'm going to talk about next and thinking about it seriously because I am thinking about it seriously. I am thinking about it very seriously. And, uh, you know, you do do what you want. But the other night, we ha I, th I think... The interview that we had the other night was was outstanding with uh, Scott Kesterson from Bards FM. If you guys don't uh, tune in to Bards once in a while, I think you're really missing out on something. Uh, he has really swung around, and I did not know he had such a uh, a vast background in food production. I didn't know that. He's amazing me with that, with with all what he's able to accomplish. Um. Boy, there's so much I can say here. But anyway, it was a really, really good, really good interview, and we were on the same page as, far as food production is to happen yet yesterday. Uh, I'm gonna do something tomorrow, uh, just because I feel like I should, and I'm gonna present you with the results of that when I get the results of that. But I'm gonna go to the county commission. I have a an acquaintance at the county commission. He will pick up the phone if I ring his phone. I got his personal phone. And he seems like a pretty decent guy. And he's done a couple things here recently that I'm really proud of him for doing. And uh, so the constitutional things. And I'm telling you, one guy on the county commission can shake the freaking place up. He really can. And this guy has shaken it up a couple of times. But I'm going to call him and I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to send you an email. And, you know, I just want to know. I, I just want you to know what the spirit of the email is. I'm not trying to, you know, push you or anything. I'm just I just want to know uh, if you guys, because your leadership in the county, have you talked at all about contingency planning as far as the 12,000 people that you represent? as far as getting them fed if come this fall there's no food because right now there's food but come fall they're saying there could be some pretty good shortages have you thought about that and i don't know what he's going to say but uh i'm going to say to him if he's if he went to it i'm going to say i'd, I'd say with you guys and you know we could come up with a plan there's plenty of land here there's plenty of fertility there's so many farmers around. Come on. Instead of uh, um, goofing off, you know, for half the day, why don't we set up some community gardens here and there and set up a canning facility, set up something so we can feed the people of our county? Why wouldn't we, why wouldn't we do that, you know? Um, but let's see what they say, you know. But either way, I think it needs to happen. If the county wanted to get involved, and they said, oh, uh, yeah, we've got some property we could use, actually, and things like that. I think that I would, yeah, I'd throw down with them. I'd give them a few pointers here and there. They, I don't know if they'd want it from me. but And I've also kind of kicked around the idea of setting up my own community garden, uh, you know, setting aside some property and, you know, tilling it and maybe uh, – put my 
my effort into it, my irrigation, all that stuff. And, uh, but if people wanted to come and garden here, like from people around here who don't have a place to do it, you know, I would consider that. And now is the time to start moving in that direction. Now is the time. I mean, if we put in an acre of potatoes, we're going to have a lot of potatoes. We can feed a lot of people with that. But if we don't put them in, we're not going to have those potatoes. Right? So it's, uh, you know, it's it's do or die time. Okay, the, the subject that I want to talk about tonight was a question that came from the resistance chicks. I'm not sure which one of them. There were our two resistance chicks, Michelle and Leah. And uh, I think we're gonna we're gonna get together next week, and I think that they'll want to be on our show, or I'm gonna be on their show. I'm not sure, but we we got really good response from having Scott on the other night Tuesday. And I'll, for a long time, I had thought, you know, let's set aside Tuesday night for interviews so we can get other people's point of view. And uh, I think we're gonna do that because there's a couple people uh, th that are out there that. I can think of right now that I would think you guys would really enjoy an interview with them. There's people right on here that we could interview like, uh, Hey, any of them, any of them, any of them copperheads with us right on, right on. There was something I needed to tell you. Oh yeah. I was thinking today I, I got to call you on the phone and talk about, uh, talk about milk shares. Um, but what I want to talk about tonight is a subject that one of the resistance chicks sent, and I thought that this could be like a whole show and it plays right into what I just talked about. I mean, it's just, that's the reality. That's the reality of the world that we're living in right now. You know, the other night when we were talking with Scott, <clears throat> His message was, and it's consistent with mine, it's like, it, take it away from them. Take food production away from them, and then they can't use it as a weapon against you. You know, like President Biden is definitely using food as a weapon right now because he's saying there is going to be food shortages. He's not saying, get my director of agriculture in here and saying to him, Junior, you get this fixed or you're fired and I'll get somebody who can who can do it you know that's that's the nature of the commander in chief is fix this get it fixed you can't do it I guess we'll do it you know that's that's usually how it works right they're incompetent especially that clown I don't I can't believe that in happening actually that's what kind of makes me optimistic you know the old statement you're watching a movie it seems like it doesn't it it just seems like we're watching them because it's so stupid but we are getting a heads up and there is a bunch of stuff going down in the country. And I, for one, I'm not going to take the chance of, of my kids going to bed hungry. So we're going to move on this. Okay. This is the question we got the other night. What would you say to the person who feels overwhelmed or scared at the thought of getting started in homesteading? What would I say? What would I say? You want to know the truth, what I'd say? I feel like that every morning when I walk out the door. I really do. Yeah, you think I got it all, all, you know, this, I got a tiger by the tail is what I have. Um, I have a lot of balls in the air right now that if I walk away, they start dropping. They start hitting the ground, you know. A lot of times, uh, you know, people have, have said, well, you know, I can't even get a hold of him on the phone. He won't answer his phone. I can't answer my phone. I can't. I can't get hung up on the phone because I have a farm to run. And that is my, that is what I want to do. That is what I want to do. And that's what I feel like, that's what makes me feel alive when I'm taking care of the farm. I, I'd say the next thing is when I'm teaching. If I was teaching something I didn't care about, then it would just be like, okay, I can do it from this time to this time, but I want $45 an hour to do it, you know? 
but when I'm teaching something that I like, like this, I'm not just like, I'll, I'll love it and teach it for free, you know? So it's sort of a, a mission. It's sort of a calling to do that. Right. But, but I'm telling you, I feel that way go out in the morning. So this morning, for instance, I had a rough idea, <laughs> a rough idea what we needed to do today. And that was, we got to get the chickens out of the brooder because they're about three pounds and the brooder's way too small for them. They had the outside, they could, you know, they could, there's like a little exercise yard that's attached to the brooder, uh, but it still wasn't enough space. They were going through the waters so fast. Rachel was watering four times a day, just couldn't keep up. They needed to be in a bigger space. Uh, inside the brooder was getting a little bit greasy. Outside, it was like a, uh, you know, from all the biochar that's in their manure, it was just like pudding out there because we had uh, rain last week. I showed pictures of it yesterday. I, I did a video on it. Um, and it, it's, it was on the Mark Baker Facebook, not... I, or maybe Jill moved it around. I'm not sure, but it, it was after I moved the brooder forward and you could see how congregated they were. And I, I didn't want them to be that way, but we had really bad weather last week and it wasn't so much they couldn't handle the weather. It's just that I wasn't ready out on the field. I didn't have the tractors ready, didn't have the covers on them, didn't have them plumbed in. And I would have been working in the rain and I didn't, I didn't really want to, you know, so... So I had a rough idea of what I wanted to do. So again, you know, this is how this person feels. They have a rough idea what they want to do. But then when they start, all of a sudden, ooh, I didn't see that. I didn't know. I didn't know that would happen. You know, it's like, let's say you, you're gonna you're gonna garden. And so you you follow some instructions, you get some of your land you know, tilled up and fertilized and ready to go and you're going to garden and all of a sudden you come home from work some night uh, and you go out there and there's weeds. Nobody told me about weeds. I didn't know about that. And so you start pulling weeds and you're like, hey, it's time for dancing with the stars and I'm out here pulling weeds. This is not the way it's supposed to be. So uh, things are going to happen that you don't didn't know were coming you know uh and so you get in a panic mode like this morning i came out and i had i knew what i had to do out there i i start doing it all of a sudden something went wrong what went wrong i couldn't find something oh i needed to accomplish one one joint on a on a, a water line and I couldn't find the tool to cramp down the, um, the rings on the, on the barb fitting. And I'm looking high and low and that's it. I'm saying, okay, somebody's doing this, you know, somebody's, somebody's intentionally, uh, sabotaging this operation. Who is it? You know, and I'm getting ready to go to the kids and saying, you took it. I know you took it, you know, but luckily I didn't. And then I thought, Oh, damn. I was showing people online, the tribe the other night, I was showing them that. So it was sitting right on this thinking table in here. So then I went out there, got it done. Uh, but, and then after that was done, we got the chickens out there. We got the feed out to them. I pull up in the driveway and then I realize, oh, the temporary fence that we set up for the cows. The bull is on the wrong side of it. How did that happen? And so I get to looking at it and I realized, hey, we we didn't do uh, a part of it correctly. And so I had to reaccomplish it and then come in for lunch. And then, you know, I mean, it's just nothing happens the way you're, you think it's going to 100% of the time. Most of the time, there's... <clears throat> There's extenuating circumstances that you didn't see coming. And sometimes you feel like, oh, wow, you're way over your head. 
And uh, I have a list, as long as your arm, of things that need to be done. And I have to prioritize those things. And it can't be done. The priority can never be. It, it can never be. Here's something that's a helpful nugget. It can't be what you want to do. It can't be. It, it has to be what has to be done. Right. So um, you're feeling overwhelmed and scared at the thought of getting started. Uh, I think a way, a technique to sift through that and do away with a lot of that overwhelmed feeling and, and fear is to create lists. Lists are very, very helpful. Uh, I find lists around here that I made years ago. And I go through it and I'm like, hey, yeah, I got all that stuff done, didn't I? And it's helpful because then I think, you know, I am getting something done around here. You know, a lot of times you feel like you're not getting anything done. You just bounce from one spot fire to the other spot fire and then back and back and back. You know, oh, the calves don't have any water. Okay, we get that going. Now the calves have water and now the cows are yelling for feed over here and then Oh, here's a water line that popped off over here. Hey, Dad, the pump's not working. Hey, Dad, are these pigs supposed to be on this side of the fence? You know, things like that. Um, we're out of we're out of broiler feed. Um, you know, things like that. Things happen all day long, and uh, as the head guy, I have to be able to prioritize when we're going to get those things done when we're going to get those things done. And my life has really changed now that Joe's working with us and the videos are getting traction. Um, I'm with him one day a week and this week it's going to be two days this week, right? So we're going to be working over at the campground tomorrow to get that going because that's going to be another thing that's going on around here this summer is allowing campers on the farm. So you you're going to be probably more scared at first until you get in the routine of, uh, you know, a day in the life, a day in the life. I mean, you catch the Z's when you can today after lunch, I was exhausted. I don't know why I worked. Yeah, I worked over at Joe's yesterday and, uh, we didn't get home until like eight o'clock. We drove a well over there yesterday, by the way, uh, uh a sand point was that neat. Um, I'd done it before. Uh, but this time was different. This time we had to get Jill over there with the divining rod to find the water and we couldn't go any more than 20 feet. She found it and she said it's between 15 and 25. I don't know how she does it, but I don't know how she has babies either. We drove it, <clears throat> dropped a, uh, a string down in there with a nut tied to the end and then bloop, bloop, bloop. We could hear it, <clears throat> put the pump on there, got the pump in it, up comes the water. It was, it was superb. Um, we pumped out probably, oh, 40 gallons and then it cleared up. And I know because we were pumping it into a trough and it was a 75 gallon trough. So probably halfway. And then the water was nice and clear and drank some of it and it was fine. So now over at their homestead where their yurt is, they have a sand point so they can actually pump water up for water in their animals and, you know, they're washing dishes and, and drinking water and all that stuff. So, yeah, I was exhausted after lunch. So I just laid down next to the wood stove for a minute and I cut 40 winks, but you, you got to do it when you can. And then got back out and put in a, a pretty full afternoon and, uh, but I had to prioritize what has to be done, not what do I want to do. Like I would really like after I'm done here to go out and get all those raspberries planted. Uh, but I really can't because tomorrow we're working on the campground. I got to go and get lumber first thing in the morning to build picnic tables. And then, you know, so I got to take it as it's going to happen. And now a lot of these decisions are not... Um, from the point of view of 
of survival for me where I'm at at this point. You know, I've got a lot of this stuff down pat. We've got the butcher shop is is at a place now where it's it's good enough, it's functional. Um, and so I don't have to do anything on that. So a lot of the jobs that I accomplish, once I've got them done, I don't have to do them over again, right? Uh, so that's that's something that when you prioritize your list of things that you need to get done, you're going to want to put them in order of importance. You know, first of all, <clears throat> your survival is at hand. But a lot of what I'm doing tomorrow has to do with actually the financial aspect of this farm. Because with the campground, we're going to have campers over there and it brings income into the farm. We have to have income. This is a real, <clears throat> a real working farm. <clears throat> we'll take income doing anything so long as it's legitimate. I mean, and this is what I talk about with the homestead model is, oh, is it just for raising pigs and chickens and, and having a garden? No, no, not at all. I mean, you could have a barber shop here if you want to. Why not? It's the homestead. People's hair grows on the, or you could have, I mean, you could have, I think this would be a cool thing because uh, we even had a guy that used to do this. He would go around to different farms and he would have a makeshift office there and he would do chiropractic on a farm. And I thought that was pretty cool because uh, a lot of chiropractors will acknowledge that a lot of your condition has to do with the rotten food that you're eating, you know? So let's get your, the, the fuel that's going into your pie hole. Let's get that fixed first. And then we can go from there. Okay. Let me read some of these. Cause I see some of this lame buck 52 present right on ice house. They think the government has a solution or government will save them. Yeah. Never works. Paulina. All right. Paulina from Southern California. How you doing? I did listen to your uh, your podcast, by the way, and I think it was outstanding. Very right on. Dan W., welcome. Inga. Keith. Ryan Howard. How you doing, Ryan Howard? I think you started coming the other night when uh, Kesterson was on. Lieutenant Kesterson. <clears throat> ration cards is totally possible. Yeah, I do. I do think so too. I do think so. And if you notice what they did during the Wu flu is they bolstered the business of the doors, like the, the Sam's club and the, you know, Walmart and home Depot and Myers here in Michigan. I don't know if you have that any other places, but they bolstered their market share and a lot of the mom and pop outfits got put out um not enough though i don't think enough of them did but some of them did <clears throat> and uh we saw where those big stores you know would limit people's access based on their willingness to comply with you know get in line you know six feet apart face diaper on all that stuff they'll do it. You know, we saw that they'll do it. So will they uh, limit people's buying? Will they do it? Of course they will. Of course they will. And the, the lady at the register, she'll just say, I'm just doing my job. Or, you know, the, uh, the automated registers, which I hate them things. I absolutely hate them. I, I will not use them. It's probably going to be to my, my folly because now I don't know how to use them. But those things can just be programmed that, you know, they know who you are. They know what you bought yesterday. You can't have it. You know, you, you can only get this much and it'll get to a certain point. Blinking light goes off. Nope, that's all you can have. See you later. Copperhead's with us. I got to tell you, Copperhead, that puppy is one of the most lovely, lovable 
little friends that I've had in a long time. I really, really love her. She's such a good girl. Thanks, Sean. Oh yeah, Ryan's here from the Bards Tribe. Good. It's good that we can uh, we can mix peoples. Lots of bards here. Okay, Dan too. I'd like to know where you guys are from, what part of the country you're from. Um, okay, yeah. Let me a few more. Uh, let me read a few more. That should fall under emergency management. Luann's with us. Mark thought Janine should have you on her show. Yeah, I'd love to go on Janine's show. I don't know, you guys. I I started listening to Tarot by Janine. And tarot card reading, I mean, that's not my thing. It really isn't. And it's really odd that I would want to listen to what Janine says. But she's just a a wise person. And I know a lot of people in, you know, my circle that would say, oh, tarot, that's from the devil. I just don't think so. I, I just, and anyway, I just like listening to her. And a lot of people got kicked off YouTube. And she's just somebody that always has a positive outlook. And, uh, and she's she's a Calgarian, you know, and I used to live in Montana and I knew people like that. I, I like Canadians. I really do. All right. Hey, Copperhead, uh, this weekend at the Cleric Homestead, uh, they're having a introduction to gardening and uh, i'm gonna go because i want to soak up as much of this as i can and this is part of my prioritization um for me now this is me and copperhead you're going to understand this because of your former life um leaders if we're in leadership positions and andy would understand this too everybody justin would understand this i think there's quite a few people would understand this and if you don't you need to consider this, get a handle on this. Uh, a good leader is always training his replacement. I'm, I'm working towards being replaced. I want to be replaced. Then I can go on to the next thing. And so the cleric, the cleric homestead, uh, you know, they've been here. They've had lunch and dinner at our house. They came, did uh, one of our classes or two of our classes, I believe. No, one class and then came up to help butcher a beef. And we talk, we talk about the direction of their farm. And I say, hey, you know, uh, training is where it's at. Uh, I will train you to train because that's what has to happen. So we have to impress on our trainees that we're training to be trainers that they need to get themselves replaced. So when you, and how do you do that? Well, uh, there's been a lot of people that have come through our classes and there are people who stand up above the crowd and say, hey, I'm, I'm ready to do this. And a lot of people don't want to, or they have their job, their career, and their, uh, their homesteading is their, their second and wow, training other people. I don't, I don't have time for that. You know, that's not in the cards for me at this point. Okay. All right, fine. But then you've got a declare comes along where it's a team. It's a husband and wife team. Tommy's working off. Beth's taking care of the farm during the day. Tommy does the, a lot of the heavy lifting when he's home uh, and weekends and stuff. But Beth is putting together, hey, we, we, we're we good at this. Let's show other people how to do it. So I'm going to attend that because I want to, number one, well, number two, I want to glean any information that I can from that. You know, as far as gardening, I'm not the greatest gardener. I would like to be a great gardener, but I'm, I'm not a great gardener. But number one... I went two and then one. Number one, they're do doing what I asked them to do. And so, yeah, I'm attend. 
of course I'm going to attend, right? And that is truly leadership. So they're going to see, hey, remember when he came, you know, he probably knows enough about this. He caught it, could have taught the class, but he came anyway. Yeah, right. Then when they have people in their tribe that are leaning forward and say, hey, we're going to have a pastured poultry weekend, they're going to attend, right? You do that to give them confidence and bolster them along their their journey as as trainers right <clears throat> so back to this question you're feeling intimidated it's because of your ignorance basically that's why you're feeling intim intimidated um the you're afraid of what you what you don't know you're afraid of what can jump out and and you know startle you and i get that especially boy some nights all of a sudden you're just like why am i doing this you know it's like you, you think your day is over and all of a sudden it's not over you know and things can go ugly pretty quick um i can i've got so many stories of things that have happened here but just last summer uh we had problems with our our water pump, you know, our well. And it, it was uh, not a good installation. The guys, everything was buried. The water tank was buried and it just wasn't good. And everything shifted and some of the, some of the parts in there broke and we had to dig it all up and we had to dig it up by hand. I mean, you couldn't dig it up with a backhoe anyway, because there's too many, too many pieces there. You know, it's too delicate of digging. So we had to dig it all up. Me and Keith dug it up. Uh, we took the tank out, uh, replaced the fittings on the bottom of it, put the tank back in, got it all situated. We didn't fill it in because we wanted to see, uh, make sure there was no leaks. I staked it off, you know, so nobody would unintentionally fall in it. And wouldn't, you know, somebody left the gate open and the cows got out. Not a big deal, except we were chasing them back in at night. And one of the cows went right in the hole, broke the whole thing to pieces again. So I had to reaccomplish it again, reaccomplished it. And in the, in the course of doing this, we realized that the tank was kind of wore out. And so we put a new tank in a bigger tank and, uh, you know, it, we filled it back in again and wouldn't, you know, something went wrong again. It shifted again and one of the fittings broke off. And it flooded it all out. And so we had to dig it up again. And this time I said, we're going to put a well pit in. And so we did, you know, uh, and I accomplished that. I finished that off. It was still pretty cold out when I did that. But yeah, I got it done. And it was a huge job. And it was just me doing it. I didn't, you know, I didn't have really anybody at the time. The kids were in school. Uh, and homeschool it's gone now, uh, doing his thing with the EMT. He, by the way, my son Keith, he passed his EMT um, examination for the state Friday. He passed it, and out of 13 people that were in his class, only three passed, and he was one of them. So I'm quite proud of him. So he's an EMT now. He's a, a certified licensed ENT and he's just finishing up his orientation today and I think he starts this weekend with the ambulance over in Cadillac so good for him went through the class and everything did really well so what else can you do to alleviate your your uh feeling of overwhelmingness and fear of starting up your I would say honestly surround yourself with people that are doing it like the thing that's going on to clerics this weekend if you can find stuff like that and go to someone else's homestead and then walk around and get the feel of what's up and then when you sp spend a little time at lunch you know 
get the inside poop from them of where did you start? Where are you going? How, what's working? What's not working? What's a good place for me to start? Be honest with people who are willing to mentor you and say, I really don't know what to do. Where do you think I ought to start? Um, I do that with people all the time. That's a lot of what my consulting is. It's more like mentoring. It's more mentoring because people don't know where to start. And so I have to look at them and say, from the looks of you, you're a mule skinner. So you're going to skin mules. You know, I, I really have to do that. I have to say, well, what's this guy's capabilities? Um, you know, you may, th you may think you want to do this, but the learning curve is kind of steep on that. And are you sure you're going to be able to, to do that? Maybe you ought to do, maybe you ought to do this, you know, and some people like that type of thing. Some people don't. Um, but another thing you could do is uh, coming up in June, June 11th is the tribe day. You're in the tribe right now. You're a member of the tribe. If you're not, get over to the Facebook group, the Anyone Can Farm Tribe, and sign up. Get in there because there's a lot of pictures and people are putting videos in and asking questions. There's a lot of dialogue going on there. Get in there and hear what people are doing and you become familiarized with it, uh, even if it's something that you're not doing. And when you hear somebody telling the stories of their beekeeping uh, exploits, you might say, hey, you know, I'd, I think I'd like to do that too. And then when you do do it, document it and post it on there so, you, so other people can, be get, can become inspired by what you do. See, so it's, it's very important that you do that. It really is important that you do that because sort of like, like, do I really want to, uh, you know, go over and rototill my neighbor's gardens? Uh, do I really want to do that? I mean, do I feel like, oh, yeah, I can't wait to do this. No, I don't. That's not the point. The point is they're going to have to eat and I would really like it if they were thinking about their own sustainability at this point because now is a better time for them to think about it when than when there is no food available at the store right so you know you 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 want to help people with this now before there's a problem that's that's why you do that that's why you do that by the way, I'm drinking milk tonight with a little bit of uh, quick in it. It's nothing like real milk with quick in it. I don't think it's organic, but I don't care. Okay, so on the 11th of June, we're going to have the Anyone Can Farm Tribe Day, and that's a day when we open the farm up. To let people come on, uh, we've lined up people from the tribe that have raised their hand and said, yeah, I'll teach a class on this. I'll teach a class on that. So some people are going to be in the maintenance shop. Some people will be in the wood shop. Some people will be out at the picnic table. Some people will be at the, the back deck of the house. You know, it's kind of makeshift, but it doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter. The information is going to get passed. And there is going to be a panel of people uh, who've started up homesteads in the last couple of years. And the panel discussion goes something like this. They're sitting, and then you're in an audience, and you get to ask them questions. And they get to expound on what they've done. And it's real life. It's a real life back and forth of of how they started and you know maybe you'll even hear some here's some of the things that we ran into that weren't good here's some of the things that did work the more you're immersed in it the less fearful you'll be because you will see that there really isn't any there's not going to be there'll be less surprises less surprises you're going to have stuff happen and you might as well get used to that that's going to happen 
Uh, but anything that you're doing, you're going to have stuff happen. You know, your straight job, you're going to have stuff, stuff goes wrong. That's just the way it is. So we can offer you that. And also, oh, wait a minute. I didn't give you the right date. No, June 11th is the pastured poultry class. Tribe Day is... Hey, Jill. Can you get me straight on this? You know, I only do this every night, you know. All right. This is a favorite place where people come to steal pens. I don't have a pen on the desk. All right. Well, hold on. I'm going to go ask when Tribe Day is. Well, let me read a few of these. Maybe Joel will come in. When's Tribe Day? July 9th. July 9th. Saturday. Okay. All right. I circled it on here. Tribe Day is July 9th. Okay, I wrote it down, so I'm not getting it again. <laughs> All right, but that would be a good thing you could do too. Find things like that around you. And what our goal is with the tribe is, uh, you know, there will be Tribe Day, like a Tribe Day meetup on Bakers once a year. And we'll keep that day. And if you're close to me or, or far away from me, let's say you're Pauline in California, you're going to have to have a tribe day in San Diego. And people can come and meet up there. And you'll draw people who know how to do stuff and are willing to share it with other people. You know, like we for our tribe day, we take a little donation if people are going to camp here. We provide a lot of the food. We ask people to bring stuff to. Have a good day. We have a really good day. And then we divvy up the money and give the people who speak just a little a little something. I mean, it's not like they're going to make a living off of it. But it is kind of nice to lean forward and say, yeah, I'll teach this. And then get 25 bucks for doing it or whatever it was. I don't remember what it was. It was but it was worthwhile doing. And what we also gain from this is like uh, Haven DeZoo, he taught pastured poultry. He'd done it for one or two years, I think, but he kept all of his data. He had pictures. I didn't go to his presentation, but I heard it was outstanding. So he's actually working himself into a place where he can speak in front of a crowd. He's got a little motivation going because people are saying, Hey, that was really good. And here's some money, you know, not a whole lot. I mean, maybe it'd be nice. Like if we give him a thousand bucks, that'd be great. Um, but he may be able to start a tribe of his own. You know, he lives pretty close to me, but Hey, we could have tribes. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But wouldn't it be nice someday if we had, Little anyone can farm tribes all over the United States. That would be the way to go. And what are we sharing? Hey, gardening, pasture poultry, butchering, how to raise pigs, how to raise cattle, how to milk cows, all the things. And then the whole food preparation part of it, the charcuterie, the how to make hamburger, how to do this, how to do that. I mean, it, the, the, as many things as you find at the store, there's a story behind it, and somebody knew how to do something to get it to that point. It's not brain surgery. You just don't know how to do it yet. And once you know how to do it, a lot of the, the problems with this question, they go away. They go away. I don't, I don't feel fear anymore. I'm not scared of anything that I have to do. There are certain things that when I come up against them, you know, I go into it with a little bit of, uh, a little bit of apprehension every year cutting hay, you know, because it's not something I grew up with. 
And along the way, all of a sudden things pop up and it can, it can lead to, you know, some serious uh, problems. You know, there's been times when the hay bind that I have right now, I needed a part for that and I couldn't get it for three weeks. Yeah, three weeks. But ever since then I got it in and I haven't had any problem with it, but you know, every year it's something else, you know, but I, I still wouldn't change it for anything. I, I thought about answering this sarcastically today. Um, what would I say to the person who feels overwhelmed or scared at the thought of getting started in homesteading? If I was going to answer that sarcastically, I'd say, well, then don't do it. You know, because if you're scared, just stay home. Just stay home where it's safe. And being overwhelmed is so unfair. That's You shouldn't have to deal with that. I mean, let, you know, let the government take care of you. You know, you shouldn't have to deal with this. You know, that would be sarcastic. But I think we all know the hard reality right now is nobody's coming for you. Nobody's coming for you. You best get this lined out while you can. And uh, myself, I'm quite motivated to do this. So that's that. Uh, I have another little topic that I thought about <clears throat> when I told you I was going to call up one of my buddies at the county committee. He's not a buddy. He's just an acquaintance. And just say, hey, have, have you guys got a plan on this? And if he said, oh, I'd probably just leave it right there. But, you know, I, I do want that email returned to me. Like, nope, we're not going to do it. And I just think that would be kind of interesting. Or, yes, we do. Maybe you could help us. You know, it's one of the two. Either you do or you don't. I would just like to know. Um, but I thought about this, and this is something for quite a few of the outfits that I'm I'm looking at right here. Uh you know, a crisis like this can bolster business. Just the way it is. It's just the way it is. If you're in the generator business and the power goes out for four weeks and you got a bunch of generators, you're going to do really well. Right? That's just the way it is. So, Copperhead Farm, I'm looking at your logo right there. You're in the food production business. Now, what is it that you don't do there? This rhetorical question that you need to know how to do there that would put you in the driver's seat. People need food, right? Now, what is it that's holding you back? You have to ask that question. What is preventing you from owning that entire process there of getting that livestock into table fare. What is it? You know, it's a rhetorical question. We both know <clears throat> what the answer is there. And I've harped on that for a long time. So with this, with this looming uh, crisis that's coming, there are opportunities everywhere for all of you to get in. All of you. I can... I can go down the line right here. I just I just look at this. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see my cursor, but okay, Luann Hoffman, her name is right in front of me. We all know who she is. She's already in the logistics business. She's already doing that. She's already transporting food. Already doing that. Now that needs to happen. That's part of it. <clears throat> so I knew a guy that started actually... Uh, a place in Traverse City called Cherry Capital Foods. I know this guy. I haven't talked to him in years, but I know him. <clears throat> he started, let's see, it was a man, a dog, and a plan. So he had a, no, a man, a van, a dog, and a plan. And he drove around and he bought stuff from him. And then he went, took it to restaurants. He was a chef. And he'd bring the chef out there and open the, and the chef would say, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. So he'd get a handful of cash 
And then he'd go out to other farms and he'd buy stuff. And he just kept doing this. And then he got a, a system together and turned into Cherry Capital Foods. And now he's not part of that anymore. Um, another guy took it over there. And it's not the same thing, but person a person could do that. Copperhead, man, yeah, that's a farm right there. You've got a lot of livestock. You've got a lot of calories walking around out there that could be table fare. Uh, what if any of us on the tribe that had acreage dedic dedicated a small Porsche horse community garden? We could make a map of where they're located throughout the USA. No, that's not a bad idea. I, I am thinking about doing that myself. It would be sort of a, you know, I could set up a community garden and have, I don't know, 25 by 25 plots and people could, I don't know if they'd pay for, I don't know. We tried that before. And people are kind of, they didn't really want to do it. I, I don't know. I'll tell you what, Inga, I tell you what, I will tell you this right now. If I had, if I had one person come to me and said, I would do that. I would come and I would farm on your property. If you would set some property aside for me. If I had one person come and said they would do that and I would have them enter into an agreement, a loose agreement, because we did this before where we had a couple of people and they just came and made a mess, actually, and then left it, you know, just never did anything with it. Um, and I'm not going to let that happen. But if we got one person that said they wanted to do it, then I would till it up and I'd probably till four of them up and see if we could fill in the rest. But, you know, I'm not going to try, I'm not going to make it happen. I'm not going to try and push a rope up a hill. I'm already doing this. I'm working in my garden right now. I'm going to, I'm going to have a garden. I actually have two big gardens and I might even do a little bit more in another area, but I would do it. I would. Then Dickie's saying, I feel like I already have too many balls to juggle, yet I can't stop throwing new balls in the air. <laughs> I hear you. Easy to get anxious about it all, all, but I try to enjoy the chaos. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. You get better at it in time, don't you? Yep. Dan W. Homesteading is like, like whack-a-mole. Managing problems is the ever-elusive pursuit of harmony. Yeah. That's right. But, you know, as you get better at things, then the things like, hey, dad, the pigs are out. That just doesn't hasn't happened here in years, you know, because we we figured out how to fence and fence effectively. So it doesn't it just doesn't happen. And we we learn the uh, psychology of those animals, too. OK, Tennessee Patriot, 1630. I feel if you have land. You must use it and maintain it and loving it. Connecting with nature is wonderful. I agree with you. I agree with you. I had so many times I say to myself, I did it today. Stop for a minute. Just in between things, you just stop. Relax. Smell that. You know, feel that sun on your neck. And just relax. I do that a lot because I really do like it. And I'm, and a lot of times I, you know, I'll be, you know, it happened today. I was in one of the chicken tractors. I got in there and I'm hooking up water lines and things, you know, and then I reach for my Leatherman and it's like, damn it. I left it out on the back of my trailer and I'm getting out and I'm grumbling. Son of a river. And I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Look at the place where you're living here and what you're able to do. You know, it's not like a crummy flight line. I don't have hydraulic oil running down into my armpits and, you know, washing soot out of my face at the end of the night. You know, 
I'm, I'm working in the dirt. I've got dirt stains on my knees and it's just a good thing. So you have to really enjoy it. I'm closing up. Okay. April, April three jacks. All right. I am closing on 22 acres at the end of the month and feeling anxious to get started. So much to do this year to get going. Well, you know what? We should talk about priorities. Like for you, at the end of this month, May, you know, what are you going to do first? Like, is there a dwelling there? You have a place to live and all that stuff. Like, um, you know, this is what we're going through over at Joe's house. We're, and we're actually uh, documenting this, but like we're, act, we're kind of putting forth a scenario. Of course, he can come here and get food. Of course he can. But let's say that he couldn't. What would his priority be on this raw piece of land? What are the priorities? And so last weekend or last week when I worked over there, we put up a 70 by 70 pen put some sheep in there and some uh, pigs are going in it this week and they're going to clear it they're going to clear it out and then he's going to start moving some of the branches and you know the brambles that are broken up into a, an area in the center get it burned and you know increase the fertility out there as best he can um, this week we put down a well so now he's got water uh we're going to talk tomorrow about, well, what, what do you think I should do next week? I have my, my thoughts, but it's his homestead. So, you know, if he asks me, I'll tell him, but, um, you got to start thinking about, Hey, it is spring, but winter's coming. He was there from December 1st. So he knows what it's like living in a yurt in Northern Michigan with a pregnant wife, right? Not a big yurt either, and having to get it set up and keep it heated, and you know the dreary days looking out the window, it's like oh no. Uh, so he knows what that's like, and he struggled with firewood. So, yeah, Nancy saying congrats to Jack three, or to. Apple three jacks, apple three jacks. Okay. I'm definitely feeling overwhelmed. It's, it's like eating an elephant though. Just start with one bite. Vindicti saying, I have 30 acres, about 29 unused, and I feel overwhelmed. Just bought a ton of seeds to cast randomly to see what happens. Just remember, crawl, walk, run. <laughs> Write down your plan so it's easier to manage. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Where do you live there, Apple? Tell us where you live. Copperhead feels like I'm literally triaging things all day, every day. Yeah. You know what you can do? Um, I, when I got out of the air force, I, I was in this habit of, I would show up to work. I would sit it. I, by the end of my career, I was in a desk and I would sit there and I'd make a list of what I needed to get done that day. That was the first thing I'd do. And it made me look busy sitting at my desk writing something, right? Uh, but then I would start knocking those things off. And by the end of the day, I had them all done. And it was like, okay, good. And I mean, they don't have to be big things, really. Like I was managing, uh, I had several buildings that I was managing. And one of the things I had to do is I had to look at each fire extinguisher to make sure that, that I inspected the fire extinguisher. Oh, yeah, inspected it. It's good. It's, uh, you know, it's up to speed. And I had to initial my name off on that. And it was, it was like one of the, the, uh, most mind numbing things to do, but it had to be done every single month. And if I didn't, if I missed one and the fire department people came and they saw it, I was getting flagged 
and you know it's like a ding i couldn't couldn't really sustain many of them like you can't even do this and i couldn't have anybody do it for me it had to be my initial supposedly all right list of lists <laughs> uh, yeah oh but uh what i was going to say there copperhead was you make that list you knock down through it and then you say now wait a minute i need to take a chunk i need to get something done like i need uh, like i usually have a uh, a building project going on and like a building project I never think that, well, I'm going to get this done this afternoon. I just never think that way. It's like, okay, I start it and I get as much as I can slide right to the end of the day. And, and then the next day I can't start on that right away. Cause I got to feed and got to milk, got to do this, 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 and then plus all the triage, but then kind of get back to it. If I can like that, it's never a let's work it until it's done. That just doesn't happen. Yeah, Inga's got a th list of needs and then a list of wants. Tennessee says it's very overwhelming cleaning out the forest and it just takes time. Seeing the contour of land gives ideas of use. Having the right equipment is most important. Um, what we're doing over at Joe's place is, uh, we fenced it in, you know, sheep are okay. I mean, and for, for them, they like to eat lamb. So they got some sheep and there's a lot of grass out there. So those sheep are going to get, they're going to get fat on what's there, which is a smart move. But as far as land clearing goes, pick. And um, you can do so much with pigs and they can make good food for you out of what's in your forest already. It's surprising what they can eat and what they do eat. All right, the cleric's with us. I was talking about you. Other than lumber, what do you guys use your forest for? I don't really have forest here, so I can't. Uh, give you too much, but I can tell you that over at Joe's place, uh, you know, firewood is coming out of there. Building materials are coming out, out of there. Fence posts are coming out of there. Uh, fence posts are uh, made with uh, locust is a good one. Um, cedar is a good one. And he's got cedar over there. You take, you pull cedar in the spring and you can get it peeled and it will last a a lot longer if you bury it. Um, building fences, this is one of the things we went over yesterday. It is so important that you start with a really good corner post. It's like building a foundation to put your house on. It makes so much sense to get your corner post done right. So you have to learn how to do it. You know, you can go work with somebody who knows how to do it, or you can, you know, take a fencing class. We've got something, a video on uh, bakersgreenacres.com under education. There's a video that you can watch. You got to pay for it, but it's enough. It really is enough. You can ship wood for animal bedding. You sure can. <clears throat> Time is what you make of it. I'm working on doing the important rather than the urgent. Though the bull on the wrong side of the fence definitely qualifies as both. <laughs> okay, Tennessee says... Must be personally motivated from the inside. Not all people are trained to have self-motivation. Yeah. Yeah. If you realize that you don't have it, then you need to figure out how to get that fixed. You really do. 
I, um, I'm living proof. I am the laziest guy. My father used to tell me how lazy I was and he was right. I was lazy. I would, and I still kind of, the first thing I think of is how can I get out of doing this? You know, but then I have to just kind of whip myself into shape and say, you need to do this. You need to do this. Vindicti, what's a good price for a wood chip or mulcher? They seem, yeah, I don't know. I don't think you want a new one. I think you want to get an old one that's, does the forest land have mushrooms, acorns? Do you trap? Okay. So she's, uh, Inga's answering Vindicti about what he can do with his forested land. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of things. Uh, mushrooms for sure. Uh, what's dropping out of the trees? There's another one, you know, do you have acorns and stuff like that? If you do, uh, pigs love acorns. Uh, edible plants. Jill's doing a weed walk on Tribe Day. So she's just going to allow somebody to say, okay, what direction do you want to go in? And they'll walk in that direction and she'll say, here's this. They'll collect it. Here's this. They'll collect it, you know, on and on, bring it back cook some of it, let people eat it. There's a lot of food out there, but we're trained that no food comes from aisle three at Myers. Paulina, glad you came. This is great. There is a bit of all that, Inga. Yep. And I don't trap yet, but I have been watching some videos. Need some gear to clean tan trap game. Yep. There you go. That's foraging, right? Learn how to forage. We do that. Um, and for us on the farm, it's a nice, you know, we write it right into the schedule. Not a pretty loose schedule, but we like to go and get leaks. Uh, we like to go and get fiddleheads, fiddlehead ferns. They're usually grown on the side of rivers. Don't get them out of the forest. Those are different types. Don't actually want to eat them. Uh, but fiddlehead ferns, man, they're good. And we go acorning too, which is really fun. Yeah, you know, Dan Dan W. just said what I was would have said, but he said it first. He says, Vindicti says, no tractor for me yet, Dan. Can't justify the expense until I grow a bit more. When you have a tractor with a loader on it, it is a game changer. And that's exactly what Dan is saying here, because it is. Our, our first farm, we didn't have a tractor. I had a gin pole on the back of my truck and so much stuff. I didn't do because I couldn't do. Um, but once we got a tractor with a with a loader on the front, especially, it just there's so much you can do with that. You know, you can lift heavy things, you can do land clearing. I mean, uh, today, uh, like I just couldn't even operate with it around here. You know, feeding uh, our chick brooder is is pretty big. It's on skids, and I had to move it today. Without the tractors, no way we could do it. No way. Paulina says she needs a puppy. Need to make a trip out here. I'll let you play with mine all day long. She would love to have somebody to give her that much attention. Okay, good point, Inga says. I wouldn't just cut it down for wood forest areas have many free resources for food and healing that's true uh i learned a lot about forestry when i went through a mushroom class uh, i always thought you know if you're gonna thin out your forest you want to take the big saw logs first which in reality i don't feel that way anymore because the forest is it's a place in space uh, you may get a few thousand dollars for a good saw log. You probably won't even. Uh, but 
what does that tree provide like a big maple tree a big you know double canopy maple tree what does that provide and once you cut it down and you get a few hundred dollars for it or a thousand whatever and then once that's spent that tree is gone for your lifetime it's gone so uh what i came to believe as the best way for forage or uh, for forest management is to take the lower canopy out and use that for firewood uh, mushroom logs and building materials but the big trees the the high canopy trees leave them especially the ones that can provide you with resources you know a big big maple tree a big one uh one like four feet across at the base and i have one of those on this farm and i don't i don't fool with it but uh the kids do um they they do the one in front and it's about you know 16 inches across and they put taps in it every spring and that sap comes in the house and then they strain it and they put it in a a nice decanter and it's in the fridge and when i open the fridge door and i see that i see raw milk and i see i don't know that's all that really is in there uh i'm going for that sap it is good stuff i don't know what it is but you take it it's refreshing and you just gives you a real good boost my parents-in-law do they tap like a hundred trees and they make sap uh, they make uh maple syrup and i'm kind of yeah you know maybe if i see maple syrup mm, eh, you know maybe on pancakes if i but i don't really like pancakes i would rather have like eggs i'm more of a protein type guy dan w missouri here retired af well that's me too we got uh Andy Zumwalt, retired AF as well. You should tell me what you did for a career field. That would be kind of... Oh, and we have, we have uh, Jeremy Huggins on here too. I don't know if he's in tonight. He usually says something. But he was uh, command chief over at Scott. Yeah. Really getting in with the, the heavy hitters. All right. The cleric's saying, can't wait to have you guys. It should be a great crowd. I know it's going to be a good time. I'm really looking forward. It's like I always have things that I'm looking forward to. And this weekend, we're going to go down to the cleric, so I'm looking forward to that. Pauline, would love to check out your... Okay, that's Luann talking to Pauline. Okay, Nancy lives in Nova Scotia. Ryan Howard is saying, the cleric, where do you live? I don't know offhand. Okay, we are 45 minutes northeast of Grand Rapids, Michigan. 45 minutes northeast. Okay, so. I know I have to drive south. I'm going to get on 66 and start driving, and then someone will tell me where to turn. <laughs> And Dicty is a Canadian refugee in Arkansas. Escaped the political prison. Wish I could help the rest of you that are stuck there. Left the Ocean City view to head for the hills in 2017. That's interesting. That's interesting. I think there's a lot, there's a, a lot of people in the United States that are just going for a quality of life. Um, I've said before, 
you know, to our regulars that are on here that uh, I pick things up from, from movies and I've seen movies like probably in my, in my lifetime, I've probably seen 20 and one that the kids had was uh, it was an animated movie about, I didn't even see the whole movie. It was uh, BFG big friendly giant or something like that. I don't remember what the storyline, but at one point, somebody was saying to the giant that maybe you should move someplace else. And he looked at them and he said, are you kidding? This is my work. And the way he said it, I could kind of relate to him. It's like, uh, it's more than where I live. This is, this is my work. This is what I do. This is very important to me. And, you know, this character was, it, it was in a, time long forgotten i guess when people cared what they did um but i think that's what we that's where we're at as homesteaders you know this is important to us all right ryan's taking off dan's taking off oh yeah i gotta get out of here Yeah. Apple three jacks. You've come to the right place if you want to take a butchering class, because that's what we we offer. That's kind of our specialty. Same with you, Dan. Come on. Come on. We offer a, a little bit of a discount for uh, veterans, too. We should just have an Air Force class. That would be a hoot. I wouldn't go. <laughs> All right. Hildy's with us. Great. Well, I'll tell you something about butchering. Um, it's it's a comp. It's like anything that you did in the Air Force. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe I'm mixing people up. I am. Um, but it's like anything that you do. It's a compilation of steps, and uh, you you just have to master a few of them, and then everything else comes in time. And uh, you know, as far as making a, hum a humane kill there's just a little bit of instruction and then of some practice on uh you know a target and it's not brain surgery All right, Dan's got something here. Speaking of food transport, I know a county extension that bought a small trailer, insulated it, and installed a cool bot on it and transporting surrounding farm produce to the region. Yeah, I mean, if you wanted to get into that, you could, you could do really well with that, just moving stuff around. That might be something for a couple people here that could, could work at that. All right, well, you just have to overcome. A lot of it is just going to be grit. I mean, you you don't know how to do it. You need to learn how to do it. And, you know, if you were really, really hungry, really hungry, and you needed to eat, you would figure it out. So if you can put yourself in that state of mind, you can figure out what you need to do. Huh. <laughs> 
Wow, there was a lot of conversation on here. I didn't I didn't notice. Apple is in South Carolina zone eight, got a house well, septic, partially fenced pastures, so need an outbuilding and finish off the fencing so animals grazing on the lovely grass. <laughs> the landowner here is the laziest sot I have ever met. Tennessee Patriot, go Army. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Go Army. Start walking until we give you a ride in one of our airplanes. Garden class Saturday. Can you say again where the info for that is? Yeah, lame duck. That you. That's uh, on the Declare Homestead. And Beth, I think you probably ought to put that on the tribe again. Uh Tomorrow's Friday, so we'll we'll pump it again tomorrow. But if there's some place I can tell people where to go to get the instructions and all that stuff. Uh, but Lane Buck, if you go over on the tribe page, the tribe uh, Facebook page, and scroll down, you'll find it. Can't wait for the November class. See you then. Oh, are you going to uh, Declaric's Homestead Hog Harvest? Probably. That's what it is. Yeah. We do uh, Homestead Hog Harvest on Baker's Green Acres, but we also do what we call anyone can farm on the road. So we'll go to somebody else's farm that hosts, and there's a lot to it. We prefer that people have taking the class at our place first, then they know what's entailed because it's pretty hard to set it up if you don't know what's entailed. We have done it. Okay, everybody's getting out. All right, we've been on an hour and a half, so that's good. Appreciate everybody coming by. Um, I will have the information for the declare um gardening class <clears throat> i'll have it in front of me tomorrow i promise oh i shouldn't say that because i might forget <laughs> but appreciate everybody coming by i uh look forward to our class tomorrow night but i'm looking more forward to my uh, farming exploits tomorrow morning all right see you guys tomorrow night